Hi, and welcome back to another experimental demonstration. Um, I've recently got hold of a set of Dr. P. H. Martin's um, Bombay inks, and they're beautiful inks, so I've been doing a bit of experimenting with them. And I've had an idea for a painting of some poppies sort of growing out on, on some wasteland. So I'm going to um, just kind of make something up as I go along and see how it turns out. I've got a piece of Sa Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper. It's taped to my board and my board's at my usual angle of, <clears throat> excuse me, about 45 degrees. Now you can't see it, but on my paper I've got some little dots and shapes, little round circles and blobs of masking fluid. My masking fluid is the same colour as the paper. I forgot to make sure of buying some that was slightly tinted, um, but rest assured it's there and as I paint you'll see the shapes that I've painted in just to preserve some of the white of the paper um, for painting in some really nice bright poppies a bit later on. I'm using my large Ron Ranson Pro Art Harky brush to wet the paper all over, getting it nice and wet. It's quite warm here today, so I need plenty of water on the paper. And this is raw sienna. I'm going to put that on to start with. I want a fairly sort of neutral, earthy background. Um, these poppies are from a photograph of mine where they're growing on a piece of wasteland with an old broken wall behind. So. While I'm not going to paint that, um, the wall, etc., I still want to get that kind of very neutral, um, dull kind of background. So I'm using now some sepia, starting off, and some Payne's Grey, and I'm starting off with these um, horizontal brush strokes. I'm going to sort of pull them out at a shallow di diagonal across the bottom in order to try and build up a sort of flat wasteland ground across the foreground but possibly sort of a wall or something going on in the distance but something very indistinct. You can see the masking fluid spots starting to appear and this is some nice strong paint, um, Payne's Grey, to continue to build up the background but I want it to be more sort of um, blurry and indistinct so I think what I'm going to do is get my water spray because I like the colours that are happening I just want to change the texture and the overall look so I'm going to spray as you can see a lot of water it's starting to really run down and before it runs down too far I shall tilt it this way and that to keep the paint oriented sort of at a slant spray it a little bit more this is where the experimentation comes in don't be afraid to experiment at, at this point if you've got nice um, you know good quality cotton paper it can take a lot of punishment and a lot of of this kind of experimentation and now you can see that my background has become much more blurry and I think much more interesting as the paint runs down the page because it's at about 45 degrees and so gravity is dragging it down it's skipping over any dry patches of paper or drier patches it's skipping over the masking fluid marks um, and I can just sort of add in a bit more raw sienna and it will continue to diffuse down with the rest of the paint and hopefully I'll be left with this lovely neutral background I'm going to lay it flat so that it doesn't run any further down the page. Just make a few adjustments with the um, three quarter inch flat brush. And then while it's laying flat, I'll mix up some sepia into an inky consistency on my bristle brush and I'll tap in some like uh, medium and small blobs of sepia across the whole painting just randomly and you can see that that's sort of bursting out and softening back but adding to the texture it would should as as it dries soften and lighten quite nicely and just give me some some nice sort of gentle but neutral effects 
Now I'm just going to show you my um, Dr. Mar Dr. P. H. Martin's ink. Um, this is a lovely colour, this one, and it's, um, it's just called red, and it's a nice deep red. I've also got um, one that's called bright red that's a bit more of a sort of an orangey red. So I suppose this is a blue red. Um, the other one is sort of more of a yellow red, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to spatter that into the wet paper um, to start off that kind of glow of that patch of poppies. This is the, um, the brighter, more orangey red, as you can see. So I'm going to try and get a little bit of that in as well, just to brighten up that area. Everything's softly diffusing still. And once I've removed the masking fluid, um, I can put in some stronger, more defined poppies. Well, that's the theory, that's the plan. So we'll see how it goes. If you look closely, you can see there's quite a lot of water pooling up around the middle, across the middle of the, of the page. I think there's a little bit too much there. So I'm going to see if I can dab some of that out with a tissue and use a dry piece of sort of tissue to, to wick it out. Um, it's very, very wet. Just being careful to follow the direction of the way the paint's flowing um, and trying not to disturb the um, those those reds too much, but still sort of dabbing a bit out here and a bit out there. I'm now going to let it sit there and dry out for another minute or so until the sheen goes just starts to go off the paper, but that it's still wet or still damp. And then I shall add in some more of those reds those red inks um, using my bristle brush again and I'm hoping that I will end up with some stronger colour um, like a second layer on top of that layer and here we are this is what I've ended up with maybe add a little bit more in there that will still soften back a little bit more as it dries but that just gives me um, that brighter background that I was looking for. It's now completely dry and I'm going to rub off all the masking fluid next. So you um, can just rub it off with an eraser or masking tape, the adhesive side um, or your finger and make sure it's all gone completely. And you can see how my poppy shapes are looking uh, quite promising there against the sort of indistinct and blurry background wash. So I'm mixing up nice strong mixtures of my ink again and using a small calligraphy brush I'm going to work across the painting and across those mas masked areas and paint in some more distinct, still loose but distinct poppy shapes and I'm hoping they're going to really contrast nicely against the softly diffused blurry um, background poppies. I'm not sure whether this is going to work. I may have um, made the poppy shapes a little bit too small and maybe made too many of them, um, but I'm going to work with this and see how it goes. I mean, this is a first experiment, and what I like to do if I experiment with things like this is to think about. Um, a different approach that I take the next time I paint a similar painting and I'm thinking that next time that's what I'd do is I would mask out some slightly larger poppies and fewer so that they really stood out against the blurry mass of, of sort of background poppies if you see what I mean. But this is what I've got to work with so I'm going to dip into both reds using them straight from the bottle so that they're nice and bright. Just keep working across the painting, filling in those white areas that I'd masked, but I'm still gonna leave a few little white bits here and there, um, just because that always adds a little bit of extra sparkle and freshness 
to a loose painting. I always like to add a bit of spatter, so um, I'm now going to mix both of these reds up and using my bristle brush just spatter a bit of um, a few drops of red here and there across the bouquet and back again with the brush. There'll be a full, mostly real-time um, tutorial on Patreon for this with reference photographs um, and a more in-depth discussion about my process on Patreon. So please follow the link below if that might interest you. Uh, but this is um, quite an abbreviated version of um, this experiment. Now what I've done now is I've got my sap green uh, watercolour pan, it's a Winsor & Newton sap green, it's really, really pretty. And I'm going to flick some of that on, try and see if I can start to get some of the poppy foliage and sort of weeds, grassy bits um, going and start it off with some spatter. So I'm trying to keep this nice and loose, but I don't want it to be too loose, I want the poppies to look reasonably sort of realistic, although stylized by the end of the painting. So I'm going to now start pulling in um, with my calligraphy brush and the sap green some stems and see if that works, see if this dull muted sort of sap green will um, be what I'm looking for. And I think that might actually be, be a bit too dull. I think that might just get lost um, with those strong reds. Yes, I'm not thinking that that sap green is working very well, so I'll dab a bit of it out and I'm going to move on to um, using some of the ink for this. And this ink is called Grass Green and again it's from the Dr. P.H. Martin's um, Bombay ink set. And it's really beautiful, it's nice and fresh and nice and vibrant. And I think that's what I need, is something a bit stronger that's going to sort of stand up to the, the strength of colour in the poppies. So using my small calligraphy brush, I'm going to put in um, these long, thin poppy stems, um, leaves, grass, undergrowth. I'm just going to work with quite fine lines towards the top of the painting where there's more light and more space. But then I'm going to build up lots more texture and tone um, through the middle of the painting and around the bottom and hopefully see if I can get some definition to some of these poppies because I think they're lacking in that at the moment. But I've already decided that I'm probably going to have to um, turn this into a sort of line and wash or mixed media. Um, seeing as I'm using watercolour, I'm using the coloured inks. I think I'm going to use black fine liners at the end um, to bring some definition to the poppies and I think that will work better. So it's sort of evolving in my mind as I paint, um, rather than just thinking, oh, this isn't working and leaving it alone. I'm th thinking to myself, how can I problem solve? What can I do? And I can already see in my mind's eye that turning it into a line and wash should be the way to um, bring, as I say, some sort of a bit more realism and a little bit more... Um, definition. Certainly not going to be photorealistic, it's still going to be a very loose painting, but hopefully once some black outlines have gone on, um, it should start to pop a bit. But I'm still going to just work on the grass and um, try and build up the textures and the, and the tones across the base of the painting now. So 
So I'm dipping into the ink and then dipping into water and um, diluting it in places, spreading it across underneath the poppies to bed them into the ground to give the impression of um, their foliage and other sort of weeds and grass. And I'm quite happy with that. I'm just going to strengthen up um, a few more of these larger poppies and, and maybe create some of them, um, paint, it, paint some of them slightly larger in preparation for um, using the fine liner to make some of them really stand out. Now this is my brush pen, um, Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pens. They're lovely pens, waterproof and really nice and I'm using the thicker brush pen to put in some black centers for a few of my poppies that are kind of facing the viewer so that you can see the middle and then once I've done that I'll go around and um, put in a lot of outlining so some in on these larger poppies you should be able to see some of the individual petals and I shall put the stems in as well. And the idea is to bring this foreground layer of poppies forward and turn them into a focal point and give them more definition. And I think it's starting to work. I'm starting to see those poppies come forward a bit, away from the sort of blurry poppies in the background. Um, and I'm going to pull the stems, um, the fine line of black stems, down across the tape um, at a slight angle um, so that this patch of poppies uh, begins to come together against this neutral background. I'm using a combination of size small and medium in these pens um, for the stems and the finer outlines. And I shall work like this across the whole painting until all the foreground poppies are defined and working cohesively as a focal point. And here's the finished painting with the tape removed so that you can see um, how it looks or how it would look framed or mounted. And I think it looks okay. It's not quite how I'd imagined it would be. And But often ex when you're experimenting, um, that's not the case. And the reason that you experiment is to learn about new materials or different effects and processes and things. So I think next time I paint this scene, and I will try it again, um, I shall make some changes uh, because I've discovered um, things that I don't like about this painting and things that I do like. And so I will work with that for the next painting. Thanks so much for watching. Um, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group for your support. Very much appreciated. I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.